In this video, I'm going to show you how to get that old plastic grill looking quite a bit better. Now, it might not be perfect, but I'm going to show you quite a few tricks that are really going to help it come back to life. And uh, it applies to just about any of them. But stick around, I'll show you the tricks. Welcome back, guys. Uh, I haven't really been posting much. A couple things have really changed and sidelined the project for the moment. Uh, big first hiccup was uh, Brandon, who has been a massive help on this build, ended up getting uh, the opportunity to move to Germany. So he's gone. Uh, his cars are on a standstill as well. This has made very little progress since he's left, mainly because there was a couple other issues uh, with a surgery, some other travel plans that came up, which tied up finances, but hopefully we are going to break free of those and continue to build very quickly here. So, uh, other than how you guys last saw it, uh, very little has changed. Uh, I don't remember even where we left off. I know I obviously have tail lights in now. Uh, going through, I'm starting to get on some of the outer chrome for the window trim. Uh, front bumper got mounted. As you can see on that, I am going to have to pull it back off and get it chromed, which is going to be a whole other issue, including the rear bumper. But today, I figured what I can do is do two things. Open up the boxes of parts I did get in to see how they look and start working on the restoration of that grill, which unfortunately is like probably close to two grand to buy again. So let's get at it. All right, the next thing we're going to focus on is this grill. Uh, it's extremely old, extremely grilled, and uh, unfortunately to replace it is probably close to $2,000. Uh, they do make reproduction ones. Just the outer bezel alone I think is $1,500, give or take. So uh, we're going to see if we can get this one at least restored and looking better. And uh, that way we don't have to keep spending so much money to fix things that we hopefully don't have to. So, let's take a look at this. A couple issues that I do know right off the bat. When you're paying attention to this side, if you notice, it stops. It actually hits. And uh, the contact is right here on this corner. So, as it lifts, you see it hit that bracket. That bracket is actually supposed to be further down. You can kind of see a, a hole that starts right down there. So I'm going to have to manipulate that. Should look and have a bolt similar to this on that side. This side freely opens and closes. So I know we're good on that. Second issue I know we have is this piece right here. So if you pay it, you can see there's a crack, let it focus right there. So the big issue that I'm running into is that pulls that outer bezel back this way away from that door which should allow it to clear. Now clearly it's been doing it for a while you can see right here where it's very worn on that silver. So we're gonna try to tackle these one issue at a time. So I'm gonna use some uh, JB Weld for plastic to try to smooth this out and re-sit that where it's supposed to and then I'm going to worry about this bracket not attaching over there. up was just a little square for drywall patching. It's very, very malleable, can be bent. What I'm going to do is I'll trace out an area that I need and cut these to be able to place there to give it some structural integrity. I'll do a couple little uh, JB welds with this to get it to hold into place, mold it to how I need it to, and then I'll go back through and continue adding to this to build up and re-strengthen that JB weld to fill in those areas. putting the heat 
adhesive on and getting it to stick with normal JB Weld for plastic. The big and easiest way of doing this is actually then using the putty version because you can shape it to exactly what you need and then you can sand it. them, Bulldog, uh, I don't know, there's uh, most like auto parts will have these. They're kind of expensive, however, what it does do is help spray paint, stick to metal and surfaces that may not be perfect. I did hit this with 320, and then I went through with paint prep or prep all to try to get rid of any contaminants. But uh, again, since I don't want to have to do this again in a few years, it's worth a couple bucks to pick one up and give it a shot. So it's pretty simple, spray it, it gets very tacky after a few minutes and then you're able to come back and actually hit it with your color. So I'll hit these and go from there. So I am not going for the OEM 100% has to be perfect as it came from the factory because I got a blower sticking out of the hood. So for me, I'm just going with a matte black style plastic. I'm using uh, Krylon, which is known to be pretty good with plastics. And uh, then on top of that, um, the nice part about using a handle like this is uh, number one, it helps keep your spray pattern pretty good. It doesn't get your finger all gunked up. And number two, uh, when you do a lot of spraying, not necessarily for this, but a lot of spraying, your finger doesn't want to feel like it's gonna fall off. the outer side first. Coming from the bottom, angle it up so you can get in. I take my bolt and put it in with a washer. I use just a generic hex bolt which will work fine for what I need it for. I can always replace them later on if I get the actual OEM bolt but unfortunately what came on mine was not OEM. Uh, I had two different sizes on either side and uh, 
neither of them looked like they were actually supposed to be on the car. Next thing I have is the wing, I guess, rod. It's pretty simple. Now I just painted this. The other side went on, but you kind of had to fight with it. I'm sure this is going to be no different. All right. Let's not break it. So this part gets a little tricky. The important part is that as this door comes down, there's actually a hole right on the inside. If you can see the screwdriver, which I don't know if you can or not, but it's right down in the middle of the grill. You can see. So the tricky part is once the door opens up, you're going to be able to see the hole here where my finger is sticking through. And also, there's the rod that freely spins. So, from the outside, screwdriver with the screw that came with mine. At least I know it works kind of. You line up the hole like so and tighten it down. Now this is always seemed to be kind of a slight pain on the other side making sure you had it lined up how you need to. But once you have it it goes on pretty simple. All right, so as of right now, that's the basic assembly for the doors to get on. I still have to do the chrome stripes on the grill itself to make sure it doesn't look like you have a giant hole from a distance in the front of your car. Uh, other than that though, I can do the rest inside, so carefully pick up your grill. Let's go back inside and I'll show you how. All right, so originally I was gonna continue this yesterday, however, the uh, something came up and I had to step away. So now that the grill's actually back inside where we want it, what I'm gonna do is actually go through it and as I mentioned before, insert some chrome lines to the inside of the grill. Uh, I originally came like that via factory and I was able to pick up some paint pens that are chrome that should work great. So what I'm gonna do is touch up on the inside where the uh, doors are in the center grill with this along the trim I need to and then I'm going to follow it up with some clear to give this a little bit more protection both for the paint that uh, for the paint pen and then also because I don't want to have to do this Back, obviously, because I have 
my scatter shield my and my uh, transmission actually not hooked up. So since it's only pivoting on two front mounts, the motor's gonna naturally wanna tip to the back of the vehicle right now. I don't want it to actually interfere with the, with the uh, wiper motor. So I'm gonna put a small jack underneath to keep that motor tilted forward where it's supposed to be until I get everything hooked up. So that's what I'm doing. That's gonna pretty much wrap it up for uh, the video. I don't know how much footage I have, what I have, and have not shown for what I have installed. Um, also for some of the parts as well. So, uh, upcoming videos, until I can get some of these other main parts that I've explained in the past I'm needing to, to get or wait on. Uh, one of which uh, that I need to tackle is the heater box rebuild. That one's gonna take me probably a little while to get done, uh, but, Probably in the near future, I'm gonna have to. Also, another thing is the steering uh, column rebuild. Going through and cleaning that up, redoing the wiring, uh, I'll walk you through that one as well when I do it. And uh, any other little tricks that I do. Uh, some little things that I did do that I didn't record. Example, putting door locks in. Um, I have a new uh, ignition here that I have to get switched over into the new steering column. Just a lot of little little things that need to continue to work until I get the big ticket items. But other than that, if you guys like the video, hit like, subscribe, comment below, tell me what you would be doing differently, what I should be probably be doing differently. And uh, other than that, keep building.